Hello, my name is Michael Sakla, and I'm a senior in Industrial and Operations Engineering. I began working in the Center for Ergonomics and Biomechanics Lab during my sophomore year through the Year Out program. The project I've been working on this summer is titled Investigation of the Force Distribution at the Hand Handle Interface during External Loading. My faculty sponsor was Dr. Thomas Armstrong, and my research supervisor was Justin Young, a PhD candidate. The hand is critical to supporting the body, especially in a work environment. For example, workers use their hands when climbing in or out of heavy equipment, such as tractors or semi-trucks, climbing on fixed ladders, hanging onto moving vehicles, like garbage truck personnel, and when using safety rails in stairways or scaffolding. In, in 2007, there were a reported 900 fatalities resulting in falls from the workplace while over 136,000 people reported injuries from falling on ladders. While there is an apparent need for better hand-handle face in interfaces in the workplace, not much research has been focused on this issue. The ultimate goal of this research is to create a biomechanical model that can predict breakaway strength at the hand-handle interface using factors such as the size, orientation, and surface characteristics of the hand and handhold. Other experiments in the hand biomechanics lab have previously been completed regarding handle orientation, size, and shape. My research is focused on recording the differences in surface pressure when pulling versus when squeezing onto a handle. This is needed in order to integrate the results from the previous experiments into the proposed biomechanical model. To measure the differences in surface pressure on the hand, a one and a quarter diameter cylindrical handle was covered with two TechScan pressure sensors of equal size. The sensors were secured to the aluminum handle with 3M Super 77 spray adhesive, which was recommended to us by TechScan. The sensors were aligned evenly so they met at the top and bottom of the handle. We created a custom calibration device that contains an inflatable bladder surrounded by an aluminum pipe with an inner diameter of one and a quarter inches, equal to the outer diameter of the handle we are testing. I actually have one with me here today in the studio. If you can see this, here is the aluminum handle with an inner diameter of one and a quarter inches. We secured each sensor and the, on the inner walls of this handle then we slid this inflatable bladder in, bet in between so that it was completely covered, covering the sensors. And we uh, used the two-point calibration system, and we inflated this to 30 and 60 PSIs. Here is the pressure gauge, and here is where we connected it to be inflated. The handle Upon calibrating the sensors and securing them to the handle, we attached them to a six-axis load cell. The picture to the right of the screen shows the configuration of the load cell, handle, and sensors. The load cell measured the forces and torques in the X, Y, and Z directions. A potentiometer was also secured to measure the angle of rotation of the handle. At the beginning of the experiment, the subject tested their isometric grip strength using a Jamar grip dynamometer, similar to the one pictured at the bottom of the screen. The ma this maximum grip strength was used for the pull trials. Each subject pulled down at 30, 60, and 90 percent of their maximum grip strength. An example of a subject pulling is shown to the right of the screen. As you can see, he's looking, he's facing a small black screen in front of him. We also tested three grip trials while squeezing the cylindrical handle. We tested six male subjects on only the dominant hand. The experiment consisted of both fixed position and rotating pull trials. The 24 trials were broken into 18 pull trials, three grip trials while squeezing the cylindrical handle, and the three isometric grip trials done with the grip dynamometer. The screenshot to the right shows the target force a subject must pull with 
in green on the left of this picture and the force with which the subject was pulling in blue. The progress bar on the far right lit up in green if the subject was within 5% of the specified force. If they were too high, it would lit up red above or too low, red below. The experiment has recently concluded, so results are still being analyzed. While the algorithms for comparing pressure maps across subjects are still being adjusted, I have written a MATLAB procedure to compile and combine the data acquired from the sensors. Here is some initial output. You can see a plot of how the pressure distribution changes as pull force increases for the fixed position handle. The plot on the far left is of 30% of the maximum grip strength, and then 60%, and on the far right you see 90%. The finger, the hand is horizontally displayed in each of these graphs with the palm on the right of the plot and the fingertips on the left. It, you can sort of make out uh, the four fingers horizontally with the maximum forces being on the middle finger and the ring finger and then the thumb is displayed in the bottom left of each of these plots. Many studies conclude that forces are greatest at the tips of the fingers when gripping an object. However, we have shown that when pulling, forces at the metacarpal joints appear to be great, the greatest. We expect to find evidence of belt friction as the hand slips from the handle by further analysis of the results from this experiment. Passive frictional forces at a point on the fingers may influence the normal forces at another point through the tissues in the hand. By comparing the pressure maps between the fixed trials and the rotating trials, we hope to locate this effect. The role of pain has not been accounted for in this model, and it may be a limiting factor. If we predict that a certain handle provides the greatest coupling, if it is uncomfortable, then the pain caused may in fact reduce a person's ability to grasp the handle. The next step would be to create a comprehensive biomechanical model that investigates tissue deformation on the hand and fingers during external loading. This would require use of an imaging system, like an MRI, to observe these deformations. I would like to thank Dr. Thomas Armstrong for allowing me to work in his lab this summer. Uh, as well as Justin Young for overseeing my day-to-day -day activities and allowing me to help him with his PhD work. And of course, I would like to thank the SURE program for giving me the opportunity to explore my interests this summer in research. Thank you very much.